right, we're live, 100% live. <laughs> Super live. You know how live it is, you know how live it is? I can tell you the time right now, it's 11.02. I couldn't fake that, I could not fake that. <laughs> Anyway, just a few minutes ago, President Trump finished his second State of the Union address. And yes, his tie was crooked when he walked in. <laughs> Trump walked past 600 people, and not a single one of them had the balls to tell him. In fact, at some point, Mike Pence was like, this is the way ties should be from now on. <laughs> I guess we should be grateful his fly wasn't open. <laughs> now, now, remember, this speech was supposed to happen a week ago, but it was postponed because of the government shutdown which is good, because it gave Trump extra time to practice mispronouncing big words. But the show had to go on, because for the political world, this is the biggest day of the year. Almost everyone who was important was there. For example, the Supreme Court justices were in attendance. Brett Kavanaugh celebrated his first State of the Union, and it looks like he came prepared. Yeah, look at that. In fact, he made it through <laughs> the whole speech and only puked twice. Yeah. <laughs> He really has grown. Oh, and as for all uh, the other Supreme Court justices, they just wore their, their normal robes. Uh, and like uh, Congressman Steve King, who you saw, he was wearing his normal robe. That's what that was. Yeah. Now, many people were asking, where was Ruth Bader Ginsburg, right? She wanted to come, but Democrats forced her to stay home in one of those safety orbs from Jurassic Park. That's what they did. They're like, please, just stay safe, or please. Now, there's a tradition at the State of the Union for the president and for members of Congress to invite some special guests to sit in the chamber. Now, usually the guests are chosen to help make a political point of some kind, and this year was no different. Some Democrats have invited guests to send a message to the president, from undocumented immigrants who have worked on Trump properties to workers who were furloughed during the last government shutdown and transgender service members. The president invited Joshua Trump. He's a Delaware sixth grader, and because he's often bullied for having the same last name, he was invited. Yeah. They say it's the State of the Union, but really, it's just an excuse for people to troll each other, right? Democrats invited undocumented immigrants who work for Trump, and then on the other side, to try and show how intolerant the radical left is, Trump invites an 11-year-old boy who gets bullied. Yeah, just because his last name is Trump. So both sides are trolling each other so hard, I'm surprised that the Democrats didn't invite the kid's bully, you know? <laughs> just chuck Suma up there like, my special guest tonight is a 10-year-old... <laughs> They call Knuckles, one of the top bullies around. He ripped the underwear straight off my body. <laughs> you gotta admit, though, inviting this kid is a pretty savvy move by Trump, right? It combines two major goals of his family. Melania's campaign to stop bullying and Donald's campaign to replace Eric. <laughs> now, another custom on State of the Union night is that one cabinet member does not attend the speech and is instead taken to a secure location in case something catastrophic happens during the speech and someone is needed to run the government. No one knows where that is, except for the Postmates guy who delivers his food. <laughs> and tonight, that cabinet member is Rick Perry. Yes, that's right. If everyone was gone, Rick Perry would have been the president <laughs> of the United States. Yeah, which is fine. I mean, he fulfills our new requirement for president. He's been on a reality show. It works. <laughs> And here at The Daily Show, we didn't take any chances either, right? We had our own designated comedy survivor, Ronnie Chang, everybody, just in case the State of the Union was catastrophically unfunny. We actually had Ronnie in a secure location watching something else on TV so that no matter what, we would have stuff to joke about during our live show. So give it up for Ronnie Chang, everybody. Ronnie! Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much Thank for you. being out there. Uh, how did it go? Oh, it was incredible, Trevor. I sat in this damn bunker by myself and watched the only other thing on at 9 p.m., a rerun of Property Brothers. Uh, you want to hear the backup jokes I came up with? Well, we don't need the jokes okay, anymore. Okay, here we goes. Uh, the most... Uh, you ever notice how one of the brothers always looks business and the other one always looks casual, but they both always look like douchebags? <laughs> yeah? No? All right. Uh, <laughs> the most stunning reveal of this show is that neither of these creepy-ass dudes ate their twin in the womb. Am I right? Yeah, uh, honestly, uh, the rest of these jokes are just about how all twins are kind of weird. Uh, oh, look, it's another me. Oh, wow, cool. It's like a mirror who can trick my wife into f***ing him. Okay, okay, that's probably good enough. Ronnie Chang, everybody. I'm, I'm glad we didn't need to put those jokes on the show. Now, luckily, we didn't need more of Ronnie's jokes because, like most of Trump's speeches, this one did have its funny moments. So let's get into the speech. Honestly, by Trump standards, this was pretty chilled. Probably because Melania read it, let him run around outside to tire himself out, you know? <laughs> and speaking of Melania, she is really popular. Madam Speaker, 
Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, the First Lady of the United States, Look at that. An immigrant got the first standing ovation of the night. I'm so proud. So proud. My baby. She be best. Everyone's like, you stay with her. Well done. Who? We couldn't do it. And with all protocol observed, the president then went on to tell us how great he has made the United States. In just over two years since the election, we have launched an unprecedented economic boom. 5.3 million new jobs, 600,000 new manufacturing jobs. Wages are rising at the fastest pace in decades. We are a net exporter of energy. We are considered far and away the hottest economy anywhere in the world. That's right, folks. The economy's so hot. So hot, it could totally be my daughter. So damn hot. <laughs> so, so hot. Look at it. But Trump had a point with all of this. Basically, what he was saying was, well, with the economy being so hot, it would be a shame if something were to happen to it. An economic miracle is taking place in the United States, and the only thing that can stop it are foolish wars, politics, or ridiculous partisan investigations. If there is going to be peace and legislation, there cannot be war and investigation. Okay, that didn't make sense, but it rhymed. <laughs> I wonder if Trump just wrote a bunch of rhymes to try and stop the investigation. He was just sitting in front of the mirror like, life is fuller without Robert Mueller. <laughs> Any collusion is an illusion. <laughs> if you lock up the orange, nothing rhymes with orange. <laughs> okay. But look, man, bragging about the economy and denying collusion, that's just how Trump begins anything, he says. You know, even when he orders McDonald's, he's probably like, no collusion, millions of new jobs, and give me three apple pies, please. But all of that positive stuff is just his way of clearing his throat, right? The real theme of his speech was that we're all gonna die. Mexican style. As we speak, large, organized caravans are on the march to the United States. Ruthless coyotes, cartels, drug dealers, human traffickers, and sex traffickers, criminal, illegal aliens, child smuggling. The savage gang, MS-13, 4,000 killings or murders, sadistic traffickers, very dangerous border. The president will be available for children's parties if you want to book him, folks. <laughs> Seriously, this part of the speech was so scary, he should have just been doing it with a flashlight under his chin. <laughs> They're coming, MS-13! <laughs> but before you feel dejected, my friends, the president has some good news. You see, these problems can all go away for the low, low price of $5.7 billion. In the past, most of the people in this room voted for a wall, but the proper wall never got built. I will get it built. With a powerful barrier in place, El Paso is one of the safest cities in our country. Simply put, Walls work, and walls save lives. Really, Mr. President? Walls save lives? Tell that to Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> he could have been an Instagram star. <laughs> now he's just a frittata with 27 likes. <laughs> now, this was a super long speech. Like, way, way longer than usual. It was so long, Nancy Pelosi got bored and just started looking through the menu halfway through. <laughs> like, what is she doing? I kept expecting a waiter to come over with an order of buffalo wings. Just be like, here you go, man. Thank you. <laughs> but eventually, there was one issue that woke up everybody and brought the whole room together. We have more women in the workforce than ever before. <laughs> Don't sit yet. You're gonna like this. <laughs> 
We also have more women serving in Congress than at any time before. Yo, Donald Trump is a rock star, guys. <laughs> he just took credit for the Democrats electing more women. <laughs> that is such a rock and roll move. <laughs> Look at what we've done, folks. Look at what we've done. I mean, to be fair, Donald Trump has done more to get women Democrats elected than anyone else, so I guess he does deserve the credit? <laughs> yes, the same way we should thank smallpox for getting us into vaccines. You know how it goes. <laughs> Oh, and we should also be thankful to the president for keeping all of us out of hypothetical wars. If I had not been elected president of the United States, we would right now, in my opinion, be in a major war with North Korea. But thanks to me, folks, Kim Jong-un has walked all over the United States, built more missile silos, and given us nothing in return. They can't go to war with you if you've already surrendered, folks. I did it! <laughs> I did it! It's a brilliant line of reasoning, right? Where he's like, in my opinion, yeah, yeah, in your opinion, anything can be right. <laughs> he's not wrong. In my opinion, we would, yeah, in, in my opinion, if Hillary won, we would all be strawberries. That's my opinion. <laughs> I can't be wrong. So all in all, this was one of Trump's tamer speeches, believe it or not. Border wall, illegal immigration, economy is doing great, hashtag no collusion. Same old, same old. Yeah, it was pretty much along party lines. If you're a Democrat, you stayed in the same place. If you're a Republican, you stayed in the same place. But there is one thing we can all agree on. He read really well. <laughs> yeah. He's really improved. Like, I don't know if he's ready for a second term, but he's <laughs> definitely ready for the second grade. <laughs> I'm so proud of him. <laughs> and... And to his credit, he tried to end the speech on a presidential note. I ask the men and women of this Congress Look at the opportunities before us. Our most thrilling achievements are still ahead. Our most exciting journeys still await. Our biggest victories are still to come. We have not yet begun to dream. That's right, folks. We have not yet begun to dream. In other words, the nightmare is just beginning. <laughs> <laughs>